And we're live. Chat, welcome to the differentiation stream. How should we do this, guys? Could the student please read out loud this description we've put together? So differentiation is finding out how a function is out. Do you know what a function is? Mm -mm. I think we should start there then, boys. I second that. Okie dokie. So take f of x equals this thing. This is an example of a function. We but what does f of x mean? Listen, f is just the function's name, right? Joe's right. Functions can have any name. We could even call this Biden if we wanted. So why is it called f then here? Well, it's a nice and short name, and f stands for function, obviously. Obviously. Okay, so this is the function's name. Yep. But what's the x in the brackets? That's the name of the function's input. 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 It's what you put in to the function to get an output. I've lost you. Hey, it's usually just a number. We'll do an example. Just say we want to put the number one into this function. Does that mean one is the input? Correct. Our input x is one. And to get the output, we just have to replace everywhere you see x with the number one. So one squared plus one plus one, so uh, three. Not bad, kiddo. So three is the output. Yep, we put one in and the function put out three. Let's try it with some more numbers, guys. Deal. Here's a list of inputs. Let's find the output for each one. Ooh, let me start. So when x is zero, we get zero squared plus zero plus one, which is one. Yep, and we already said that when x is one, f of x is three. Wait, so x can change? Of course it can. X is what we choose to run through the function. So like when we make x the number two, the output would be Seven. Uh, Rosa, please, could you do the next one? Sure, so when the input x is four, the output f of x equals 21. That's not even on the table, Joe. We'll add it. Guys, wait, so when x is three, is f of x 13? You betcha. I think I'm starting to get it. Hold up, we can even do it with negative numbers. Minus one, minus two, Minus three. I get it, I get it. Can we get to the differentiation now? Patience, watch the screen. This is called a graph. Two number lines that cross each oh, other. Oh, come on, I know what a graph Shut is. Shut up and listen. We Shit. now have these inputs and their corresponding outputs, which we can plot on this graph. Right, so minus three, seven. So what Joe's doing, chat, two, is finding three. each Input one, on the x-axis and plotting one, the matching output three, two, on the y-axis. Is that why it three, says y 13. equals f of x? Exactly. It just means the y position of each point equals the value of f of x. By the way, fellas, I couldn't fit the point 0.421 on this graph paper. It doesn't go high enough. No stress. We're still able to see this beautiful u-shape that's being formed. So you meant to, like, connect the dots? Well, here's the thing, kid. If we found every input and output under the sun, we wouldn't just have dots. We'd fill in all the gaps, and the full shape of the graph would appear. Hey, let's slap this function into Desmos so we can look at the graph in detail. What, is that just like a website? Yep. Completely free, too. So check it out. Every coordinate on this graph is a pair of an input and its output. So say I wanted to know f of 5, I'd find 5 on the x-axis, then head on up to where it meets the graph. And the y-coordinate, or the height of the function, would be the output, which is 31. Graph some other functions for us, Barack. How about f of x equals 2x? Huh. Now notice. This is a straight line. Yeah, why? Why is it straight? Well, whatever the input x is, the y value, basically the height, is just double that. So here you got 1, 2. Then next to it you got 2, 4. Then 3, 6, 4, 8. That's why it keeps going up in a straight line and at a steady rate. Crazy Rhubarb Lady 3 Ooh, donated $1. <laughs> Please do some real life examples of functions. Great idea, Rhubarb Lady. Let's start simple. How do you find the area of this square? It's like this side of the square times that side, right? Right, so say we call the side's length L, the area A would be L times L. L squared. Wait, so are you about to tell me this is a function? Of course it's a function. How? Look at this. The input is L, which is the length of the square, and the output is A of L, the square's area. Right. So this function on a graph looks like this, and with this, you're instantly able to see how area changes as length does. So say we're measuring this in meters, guys. When the length is one meter, the area is one meter squared. When length is two meters, the area is four meters squared and so on. So why does the graph go the other way? 
You can't have like negative meters, can you? Ah, that's right. So even though this is what the full function looks like, we only care about the part where L, the length of the rectangle, is greater than or equal to zero. Let me put that up on the screen. Thanks, bro. Student and chat, you still following? Yep. Okay, let's do another real life example. So when Donnie joins McDonald's, his manager tells him that his yearly pay in dollars is a function of time in years. So the input is time and the output is his pay. That's exactly right. Chat, notice the, uh, the y-axis has been squished here. So each square's height represents $1,000. We did this so it's easier to see what's happening over time. Radas, this is a perfect, perfect opportunity to go into differentiation. Finally. Let's go back to our description. Quick, 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 okay, read all of it. It's finding how a function's output changes when its input changes. Pause. So for Donnie's salary function, we said the output is his salary and the input is time. So differentiation here would be seeing how his pay changes as time changes. Yes, yes. It looks like it goes up with time. It does. It goes up every year. Hell yeah. But at what rate? I'll give y'all five seconds to figure it out. Chat, spam the chat if you know the answer. Three, two, one. Five hundred dollars per year. year. That's the rate of change of Donnie's salary with respect to time. Hmm. So what does this mean? It means that each year, Donnie gets a raise of $500. Good for you, Donnie. Appreciate it. So how did you figure that out? Is it because it says 500T? In this case, yes, that works. But what if we only had the graph? Yeah, listen, since this is a straight line to find the rate of change, what you can do is pick any two points on here and compare how much the pay went up between them to how much time passed. So the formula for calculating this is super simple. It's just rise over run. Yo, I think I've heard of that before, but how do you actually know what the rise and run is? Yo, it's so easy. The pay here starts at 18 grand and rises up to 20. So overall, we know it went up by $2,000. Yep, and the run is just four years because our first point is at year two, then one, two, three, four years pass until this second point. So you basically just like read it off the graph. <laughs> you can, but the official formula for this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What? Don't worry, it's, it's the exact same thing. We know both coordinates of our points one and two, right? So if we did the second points y minus the first, we get this distance, which is the rise, see? And by doing the second points x coordinate minus the first points x coordinate, we get this one, which is the run. Oh, right. So Y just means the stuff on the vertical axis. X just means the stuff on the horizontal. Essentially, yes. And you'll check it out, kid. This calculation gives you 500, just like everyone said before. And wait, you said this works by picking any two points. Yeah, as long as they're both on a straight line. Hey, Joe, huh? do this with two different points, please, and show everyone the answer comes out the same. Koki dookie. So I'm going to pick these two on the edges, then do this pay minus this pay. Yeah, yeah. I've got a question. Let him cook, God damn minus it. This time. So do that and you get $500 per year again. You're on fire, Joe. And by the way, chat, this is also called the slope or gradient. Wh why? Because all of this really just comes down to finding how steep this line is. Excellent. Okay, now let's lock what we've just learned in by continuing the McDonald's lore. Awesome. So after eight years of flipping burgers, Donnie's manager notices he's starting to give off real bad energy. And he decides that for the next four years, Donnie's new salary function is gonna just be pay of T equals 21,000. It'd just be a flat line on the graph, by the way, Chet. You guys try smiling after 3,000 burger flips. So question, <laughs> what's the rate of change now. Okay, so I'm gonna pick two points on the line, one and two. Yeah. And then see what their coordinates are. Nice. Then use the formula and do this one's y minus this one's y. That's the rise. Yeah. And divide that by this one's x minus this one's x. And what does that give you? Zero dollars over four years. Which is? Isn't zero divided by a number zero? Yep. So the rate of change is zero dollars per year. Yo, why is the chat saying it's obvious? Because it is. Since my pay didn't change at all over that time, the rate of change is obviously zero. Obviously. Okay, last one now. Say Donnie starts really messing things up in the kitchen. 
and his manager decides to start paying him less each year. So looking at this, what's the rate of change now? Uh, I'm just going to use the formula again. No shame in that. Okay, I'm going to pick these two points that are like pretty far apart. Nice, 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 nice. Then do the second point's Y minus the first point's Y. Nicely done. That's 9,000 minus 21,000, which is... Uh, minus 12,000. Wait, what? How can it be minus? Keep cooking, we'll explain in a second. Okay, so divided by 15 years minus 12 years, so three years. All right, so the rate of change or slope during the death of Donnie's career is negative $4,000 per year. <laughs> so why is it negative? Well, it being negative means that each year his pay goes down by $4,000. Unbelievable. And you'll look at this. Remember we said the rate of change is just rise over run? Yeah. Well, over this stretch of time, the pay drops. So it, it technically rises a negative amount. Make sense? I like that, Joe. Very smart. Yo, I just noticed when the rate was positive, the graph was slanted uphill. When the rate was zero, it was flat. And when it was negative, it was downhill. Bullseye. I was 15 years on the job and I retire on 9K a year. Living the dream. At least the tax man's not interested, am I right? <laughs> You'll still get you, Brokey. <laughs> Which one of you snakes <laughs> let her join? Was it you, Joe? She kept begging me on WhatsApp. I'm sorry. Settle down, boys. Guys, everything you've said makes sense. But most of the functions you showed at the start were curvy. Not straight lines. Good observation. So how do you do rate of change when it's a curve? So this is why differentiation is goaded. If you pick two points on a curve and find the rate of change of the straight line between them, that gives you the average, average rate, rate of, of change. change. But differentiation lets us find the rate of change at a single point. Okay, there's actually a name for that. It's called the instantaneous rate of change. Guys, I'm tired of math. I want to play Minecraft. <laughs> but we've barely scratched the surface of differentiation, Joe. I don't care. I want to explore the nether. You go play deer. I'll cover for you. No, I want to play too. Oh, whatever. I'll open up the realm. But don't think you've escaped differentiation. We'll be streaming more lessons soon.